Hello, second graders. Welcome back to Fiesta Gardens Library. This is week six of distant learning in the library. I would like to continue and finish the story of Diva and Flea. This is our last week before October break. So I'd like to finish this book. Let's get going. The Story of Diva and Flea by Mo Willems. And if you remember last time, Diva and Flea went flaneuring together and saw the wonderful Eiffel Tower. Flea is the cat and Diva is the little dog. Diva thought she was being quite brave. At the end of our reading, she said to herself, I am not a great flaneur yet, said Diva to herself a few seconds later, safely deep inside the apartment building at 11 Avenue La Play, but I am brave. Let's continue. Le deuxième entracté, the second act or intermission. Chapter eight, a strange noise. Flea surprised Diva by arriving outside the courtyard gate first thing the next morning. He was eager to discuss the adventure of the tower around the corner. Diva thought she had been very brave. Flea mm, wasn't so sure Diva had been as brave as she thought she had been. But then again, as Diva pointed out, Flea hadn't tried something new the day before. Suddenly, Flea became very quiet. Oh, I did not mean to hurt your feelings, said Diva. It's not that, replied Flea. He had heard a strange noise from inside the building. It sounded like, or maybe it sounded like, there he is. Flea wanted to know what that sound was. Oh, said Diva simply, that's breakfast. Breakfast, asked Flea, sounding out the word for the first time. This was exciting. Flea was discovering a new thing. Here's Diva. He pondered for a second, then he asked with a touch of jealousy. Is breakfast your friend? Kind of, replied Diva with a laugh. Come and see. Suddenly, Diva ran through the doorway into 11 Avenue La Play. She looked at Flea from inside and smiled a nice smile. Take a little step and see how it feels, she said. Remember, he said that to her. Very funny, replied Flea, but he did not move. Are you coming? Diva asked. I am a flaneur, said Flea. Of course I'm coming. But still, he did not move. Chapter nine, the grand sight. Flea was a great flaneur, but he was no fool. He knew there were many surprises inside of buildings, some of which included brooms. The fact that brooms usually swung at visiting cats did not help things one bit. But if Diva was inside, and she was, then it couldn't be that bad. So slowly and carefully, he followed in Diva's paw steps. Flea had seen many things, and yet his tail shot up when he saw the grand entrance hall. There were giant mirrors in golden frames, fancy designs carved on the stone walls, and a marble floor that made Diva's toenails click as she walked across it. There was also an open door. That is where I live, said Diva, before dashing through the doorway and completely disappearing. Flea took a deep breath and said, it is a good thing that I am so brave, but he did not say it very loudly. Then he crept toward the door. Behind the door was an apartment with a table and chairs and a wall covered with photographs of Diva sitting, smiling, and running away from things. The photographs were all different except for one thing. Diva looked very happy in all of them. I don't know if you can see. Flea 
flea realized that someone must stop and look at these photographs often and smile, just like he was smiling now. Then he realized that no one had ever bothered to take pictures of him. That was a big thought for Flea, big enough for him to forget where he was for a second. Flea turned to Diva to ask her about the photographs and noticed that she was right next to a pair of feet. And that pair of feet was right next to a broom, yelled Flea, run away, Diva, run away. And there he is, getting out of there. Chapter 10, A Little Bit Magic. Flea took his own advice. He ran as fast as he could out of the apartment, across the entrance hall, past the doorway, through the courtyard, around the gate, and onto the safety of the big, wide sidewalk outside. But Diva did not follow him. Flea was not sure what to do. He was here, and Diva was there. Did Diva need rescuing? If so, Flea knew he was the only cat between Diva, a pair of feet, and a broom. So Flea returned. Inside, he saw Diva still sitting and smiling right next to the pair of feet and that broom. Wow, thought Flea, Diva really is brave. Suddenly, the feet began to move. Suddenly, the broom began to move. Flea's eyes grew wide, but the broom did not swing at him. Instead, it began to swish back and forth in a kind of sweeping motion, as if it wasn't concerned about Flea in the least. Oh, don't worry about that broom, said Diva calmly. That is a nice broom. It belongs to Eva. She's the guardian and she lives here with me. Flea had no idea what a guardian was, but he was pretty sure Eva was a human type person. Flea had seen people and dogs take walks together in the park, but he never imagined that they could live together. Everything inside this apartment was so odd. Let me show you something, said Diva, as she walked right past Eva's feet in the sweeping broom. Flea bravely followed her to a corner where he saw a bowl filled with something. This, Diva said happily, is breakfast. At first, Flea was disappointed. Diva's friend did not seem very interesting. Then he noticed a particularly delicious smell. Food, he said, it's food. Food was his favorite thing, next to Diva, that is. Have some, invited Diva. Flea had eaten food in the morning before, but he had never seen food just sitting there, waiting to be eaten. He took a big bite and then another and then another without ever looking over his shoulder or having to quickly scamper away and be scared. The inside of 11 Avenue La Play may be weird, said Flea with a mouthful of breakfast, but it is also a little bit magic. As a cat without an owner, he always had to steal food. La Fin, the end. Chapter 11, a favor. The very first thing the next day, Flea rushed to 11 Avenue La Play with the hope that breakfast was more than a once in a lifetime thing. Luckily, breakfast happened with a great regularity in Diva's apartment. After their meal, Diva and Flea sat in a patch of warm sunlight in the middle of the courtyard. Curious, Flea asked Diva, why are you afraid of the feet out here, but not afraid of the feet inside? The feet inside end in Eva, said Diva, but I don't know what is at the end of the feet out here. Diva's answer gave Flea an idea so exciting, his tail shot straight up. Flea turned to his friend. You showed me a wondrous and delicious new thing yesterday. 
I owe you a favor. Diva was flattered. Also, she loved favors. What is the favor, she asked, hoping it would be a piece of ribbon and not another dead mouse. Remember that. I will show you how to meet new feet, said Flea. This was not Diva's idea of a favor, but Flea was insistent. It will be a wondrous thing, he said. Diva did not say anything. I will be right here by your side the whole time, continued Flea. Just trust me. Diva looked at Flea. Okay, she said, but she did not say it very loudly. Suddenly, Diva and Flea heard the telltale click clacketing sound of strange footsteps coming from the street. Feet, whispered Diva nervously. Every part of her wanted to turn and run away. Every part that is, except the part that trusted Flea. So Diva stayed, Diva waited, Diva trusted. Feet again, click, clack, click, clack. Diva could hear the feet coming closer. Then she could see the feet coming closer. Flea did not move, so Diva did not move. Then the feet came to a stop right in front of Diva. Say meow, instructed Flea. Woof, said Diva. Close enough, said Flea. The almost meow must have done something because just then a huge hand, almost as large as a foot, appeared out of the sky. Diva looked at Flea. Flea whispered, the wondrous thing is coming. Diva scrunched up her nose and closed her eyes, but still she did not move. Then the hand touched Diva's head and started to pet it. The hand was gentle and friendly. If it could have talked, it would have said something like, why, hello there. You are very nice and I'm very glad that we can share this moment. You have made my day a little better and I hope I have made your day a little better too. Wow, thought Diva, that was a wondrous favor. Told you, said Flea. Now, what was that thing you were saying about something called la a -unch? Chapter 13, Diva and Flea Now. This is Diva Now. Diva lives with Eva, the guardian of 11 Avenue La Play in Paris, France. Sometimes she and her friend, a big cat named Flea, pass through the courtyard gate to discover new things and meet new feet on the streets and avenues of the city. Diva has become a flaneur a small dog in a big city who has seen things and done things that other small dogs in Paris have only heard about from passing cats. Even though Diva has lived many adventures, she still loves stories, especially Flea's stories. This is Flea now. Flea is a great flaneur who has seen everything but still looks for more because there's always more to discover. And now, thanks to his friend, a little dog named Diva, he has discovered that more in a most surprising place. It is located through a door that leads to a small apartment in 11 Avenue La Play in Paris, France, that has ample food and ample love and one harmless broom. Lots of food and lots of love. This is where Flea now lives with Diva and Eva. This is where he eats breakfast every day. This is where the wall has a photograph of him. These are all parts of his favorite story. The story he calls, the adventure of when I found a friend and a home at the same time. And there's a little photo of him. He now lives with Diva. Au revoir, the end. Unlikely friends, but what a friendship was developed. The Story of Diva and Flea by Mo Willems. I hope you enjoyed this very first chapter book. I'll look for more chapter books to read to you, but when we come back from fall break, we'll be reading about Halloween and the big presidential election. Bye-bye, second graders.